This podcast encourages and empowers you to create your own unique real story, develop your own unique real statement, and discover your own unique real self. The power is yours. Good night, good night, Thomas Russo Jr. How are you doing on this wonderful, beautiful night? Doing great. How are you doing this evening? I'm great. I'm great. I'm glad that we we actually got to connect. What part of the world are you in right now? Currently, I'm in lovely Basking Ridge, New Jersey. Sweet. What's the temperature like there now? Uh, about 50 degrees during the day, and it's a little cool at night, but we're, we're getting ready for spring finally, so we're excited about that. That's good. I spoke to someone in Chicago, and she said, we just had a 50 today, and you know, she was like so excited. Like, she was really excited, so. I yeah, low well, yeah. expectations. But <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> we'll, hopefully, we'll exceed those expectations shortly. Mm-hmm. Well, Thomas, do tell me, uh, what, what, which of your talents is responsible for us connecting at this specific time in history? So we both have a mutual friend, uh, Dillis Victoria, who's great. Uh, She has her own social media marketing company, and she is working with me on marketing my new book, There Are No Politics in Heaven, (laughs) which is a personal account of my life story as well as my journey to Christian faith. So it's part memoir, part self-help book for men, and it comes out on Amazon next week, and that's how we connected. That's super cool. Uh, tell me about the name, please. Uh, it, it's it's definitely catchy. So I spent most of my life in politics. I was the youngest ever elected in my town growing up. I served in another community. I've been an appointed and an elected official, and politics occupied a lot of my time, a lot of my thought, and I really defined myself by my titles Uh, over my lifetime. Not necessarily something I'm proud of, but it's just something that's my reality. And uh, about four years ago, I became a born-again Christian in September of 2015, and I recalibrated my whole existence, personally, professionally, spiritually. And I really started to look at politics through a very different prism. And, you know, for me, politics was my drug. Politics was the thing that I put a lot of value in, for other people, it could be alcohol, drugs, it could be pornography, it could be um, bad relationships or just things that take you away from God, things that take you away from your family, things that take you away from your, your true being. So for me, it was politics, but you know, politics is a metaphor. It could be anything really to anyone. Hmm. So, I mean, like, what state of mind are you in now from that first time in four years ago to now? Like, oh, what's going on with you? Oh, it's it's night and day. Uh, I put politics to the side, and I spent more time. You know, I, I got to be honest. I used to focus on the minutia of life, like most men do. And you know, I can only speak from a male perspective, a men's perspective, male perspective. So, you know, I used to focus on health. I used to focus on wealth. I used to focus on title and job and achievement, and all of these things. And I realized when I became born again that I really wasn't achieving excellence in any one of those areas. I was doing okay, and I was probably doing better than most, but there was a very heavy price tag and a toll that weighed on me spiritually to achieve in those areas. When I changed my life, I changed my view, and I started to put God first. And once I put God first and took myself off the throne, which is where I had put myself, everything changed. And it was, so it was almost like I just had to invert the pyramid. Instead of worrying about those, the day-to-day minutia, I focused on God, then my wife, then my daughters, and then everything else. And it completely changed my world. Who's the best person to live with? The previous guy or the new guy? Oof, I wouldn't want to live with the previous guy. So uh, I'm going to (laughs) say the, the new version, the permanent version of Tom that's here today is a much more relaxed, kind, gentle spirit than the previous hard charging type A win mm. at all cost version. So I, I, I pref- much prefer this version of Tom than the previous. Love it. There's no politics in heaven. Wonderful, wonderful. So what does the storyline in that book look like? So the first half of the book is really my journey from childhood through becoming born again. So it it took me 43 years to get my uh, sea legs, but 
by age 43, I, I realized I needed to reboot the, the system and change everything. So the first half of the book is my life story. And the second half of the book is lessons learned and how any man and really any individual can apply those lessons to their life. You know, I, I wanted people to understand my background and how I, you know, became a successful individual on the outside, but a depressed person on the inside. Right. So mm. all hat, no cattle, very, very flashy, very high achiever on the surface. You'd think perfect life. And yet dealing with demons and dealing with depression and things on the inside that I needed to work through. And I did that when I found Jesus. So thank God. The second half of the book, though, is how can you or anybody reading the book take my lessons of faith and my journey and apply it to their life? Because obviously by the end of the book, I want somebody to, to find some nugget, some kernel of wisdom that they, you know, so they have an aha moment where I say, oh, okay, I can, I can do this or I can apply this to where I'm at. Or I know somebody, a brother, a father, anybody really who's, who's struggling to try to kind of figure their way in this crazy world. And it's really through faith that I found my, my greatest joy and my greatest comfort. Hmm. Pretty amazing story. Love it. So you said it'll be out next week, yeah? Yeah, next Thursday there'll be a paperback version, there'll be an ebook, and you know the website nopoliticsinheaven.com will launch. And really the book is you know one component of what I'm looking to do with my life. I'm looking to do obviously, you know, your great podcast tonight and speak to people around the world. I'm looking to speak at churches and men's groups. Um, I want to do coaching and empowerment consulting. Like this is, this is a crusade for me now because I feel it took me 43 years and a lot of, a lot of blood, sweat and tears to learn these lessons. And, you know, there's collateral damage mm -hmm. that you deal with in your lifetime of the people that you hurt. Or for me, maybe it was the people I walked over to get to a higher rung on the ladder. And I want to prevent men and other individuals from spending decades of their life trying to figure this out. So if I can help them shorten the amount of time it takes for them to find faith and eliminate fear and choose love, peace, hope, and joy, which are the things that I found through Christ, if I can help at least one other person, then I really think my life would have meaning. So that that's really my purpose. The book is one component of that. But it's obviously the most important because it really sets the table for what I'm trying to speak uh, about to men all over the world. Love it. All right. Well, amazing audience. Again, you're hearing it live from Thomas Russo Jr. Tom, a.k.a. Tom, yeah? Or a.k.a. Yes, of course. Mr. Russo. <laughs> well, Tom, let's switch gears for a moment. Let me now invite you into my time machine that is surrounded with beautiful, warm, blue Caribbean water. Tom, what's your earliest childhood memory? Uh, when I was under the age of seven, I often remember my childhood being full of love and laughter, me with a smile on my face and a song in my heart, and oftentimes a microphone in my hand. Are you serious? Are you born to be a podcaster? <laughs> uh, yeah, well, a suffering broadcaster, but yes, I, I was kind of an entertainer or center of attention person from an early age. Why do you think this memory is so clear? Uh... Because it was pure, unadulterated joy, it was before my world became a darker, more unforgiving place. How do you see that memory connecting to who you are today? Yes, and that's the irony. I'm glad you pointed that out. It's like I've gone back to that time of life. You know, when we're born, I think we're born perfect, right, through God, and then life gets in the way, and you deal with the toils and tribulations of life. It, it, I'm glad you pointed that out. I, I actually feel like I've gone back to a much more pure, joyful version of self. Yes. Mm -hmm. Can I add something? Sure. I'd like to add that I think, I think giving yourself grace is important and understanding as well that like the pain you've been able to endure, like you could have died and not seen the truth you've seen today. So well wow. done. Right. You know, I went, I went through depression. I had thoughts of suicide. I, I really did not see any options or avenues. I thought, I, I always say I was the type of person that I thought had all the answers and I realized I wasn't even asking the right questions. Mm. And it was when I w had that 
darkest hour moment in my office in September 2015, where I thought my life was over, I heard a voice, and it was Jesus saying, Tom, it was time. Mm. And what Jesus meant by that was it was time for me to push through my issues and figure life out from a different perspective. I wasn't living up to my potential of what God had given me in terms of you know responsibilities to my wife and daughters, to the community that I run, to other opportunities to teach and do other things. I, I thought I had all the answers. And like I said, I had myself on the throne. And I think God did a very big favor when he pushed me off the throne and helped me realize, nah, only God gets to be on the throne. It doesn't work the other way around. So yeah, it was, it was a very dark time in my life and I persevered, but I don't think I'm unique. I think everybody has the potential to persevere but they need something stronger than self to hang their hat on. And for me, you know, for me, it's a Christian faith. For others, mm. it might be something different. But you can't go through this world and just rely on yourself and think you can figure it all out. I just don't think it works that way. Mm. Right, my friend. Well, if we fast forward to when you were 12 years old, what was your favorite song? Uh, that would be Owner of a Lonely Heart, ironically, uh, by Yes. <laughs> 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 All right, my friend. Well, we've arrived at our destination. But before we get off of this time machine, there's a small declaration form. So it's yes or no. We're going to move pretty quickly here. Are you ready? Yes. Tom, have you chosen someone to pass on your skills to? I have uh, two children, uh, Ashley and Krista, and I would like to impart my wisdom to them so they can share their message of light and love with the world. Hmm. Are you married? Yes. My lovely wife, Trish. We will be married seven years this June. Well, congratulations. Do you believe in God? Yes, of course. God is everything to me, so absolutely yes. Do you watch TV for more than three hours a day? Absolutely not. How about three hours a week? Uh, a few hours a week, but honestly, I spend most of my time on these other pursuits, so I don't have time to watch much TV. Okay. And what about screen time, the phone and the computer? Is it more than eight or less than eight hours a day? Uh, unfortunately that's probably pretty close to eight hours a day because of work responsibilities and home. But mm. I think that's just a necessary thing to try to get message out to people and connect with the right people, places and things necessary to do God's work. All right. Tell me if you had to share with us your own unique real statement, a statement that represents who you are, Thomas Russo Jr. What would you say that is? Two things come to mind. Every day is an opportunity to spread love, peace, hope, and joy. And happiness is my default position. Love it. Tom, this was such a great pleasure. Before you leave, is there anything else you'd like to share with our amazing audience? No, I just want to thank you for the time and thank the audience for listening. Just a reminder, the website, nopoliticsinheaven.com, will launch next week along with the book. There are no politics in heaven, paperback and ebook on Amazon. I thank you so much for the opportunity. I really appreciate it. Hey, this was such a great pleasure. Thomas Russo Jr., thank you for being on What is Inspired by 12 Minute Convos at Angel Jones. This segment has been brought to you by Amazel Enterprise. Thank you.